understand why I do what I do. And I've been teaching it ever since. I'm constantly refining it, I'm constantly going deeper with it. And I probably constantly will. And there's a reason I call it the revealing process now. I want you to think about what is releasing in reality. And releasing was a different concept. I was always taught when I was working on my mind, this idea, well, I was taught about feeling. I had a teacher that taught me a lot about feeling and his teachings were huge for me. But there was also uh, uh, this deeper realization with releasing uh, about feeling that kind of clicked in for me. Now, if you have the thought, a negative thought, a dark thought, a heavy thought, or any thought, it's going to be, it, what keeps it around is the emotion that's attached to it. So you have a thought plus emotion. And I want you to think about that for a minute. I have the thought, I don't like myself. Well, I've got to have an emotion to give that thought any effect. So if I have uh, the emotion of self-hate or anger, that's what keeps the thought in place. That's why I keep thinking it. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. If you have the thought, I don't like myself, but there was no negative emotion, there was no emotion, how long would that thought hang around? How much effect would it have over you? Probably none. You see, it's the thought plus emotion that causes the problem. And so the real core of releasing is we're letting go of the emotion. So if I have this thought, I don't like myself, and there's a sense of hate, and I can welcome that sense of hate, and then I can let that hate go and make it even just a tad bit lighter, it kind of changes the way the thought feels or it even changes what the thought is. Then I make it lighter, and then I make it lighter, and pretty soon the thought fades away because it doesn't have any more emotion. Hold it. There's no more hate. There's no more anger. There's no more rage. It's just getting lighter and lighter and lighter, and pretty soon maybe you have love there. And the thought goes from I hate myself to I love myself. So kind of let that in for a minute. That's a powerful realization when you think about it. So as we go deeper, we begin to, uh, you know, we got to understand all the little pieces that go with this. Now, what's feeling versus an emotion? We can feel a lot in our bodies and we, and we can have an emotion in our bodies. The way I look at this is, the, let's say, the emotion of sadness has a set of feelings attached to it. So feelings are, if we take away the label sadness, what are the feelings that allow you to identify sadness? You might describe it as heaviness in your heart. You might describe it as a darkness, or it might describe it as a, a pulling down on the shoulders or a pushing down on your neck. Everybody's going to have a different set of feelings to describe an emotion. So at one level, we have emotions, sadness, loneliness. At another level, we have the feelings that drive those emotions. As we start to get more and more in touch with the feelings that drive the emotions, uh, we start to be able to get beneath the thoughts and look at the emotion and then the feelings and let those go, actually have the body let those go. Because you don't even need to do anything. You just ask the body to do it and it does do it. Um, and then you'll start to feel better. And it's pretty amazing how much lighter you get when that happens. So being in your body versus being in your head. Now, the next piece I want to talk about is, is it, Typically, when you're in your body, you can feel everything around you. But so many of my clients come to me and they're stuck in their heads. And so, so this is a big piece. When it comes to releasing, we need to feel the body more than we need to think. If you're addicted to analyzing everything, a big part of releasing, if you really want to get good at it, is to stop analyzing. Stop trying to figure it out. Let go of the need to understand. If you have a huge need to understand why or how this got there versus just let it go, feel it and let it go, that's part of what's keeping you stuck. The mind will expand what you focus on. If you keep expanding on why, um, what's keeping you stuck, uh, what's holding you back, and I need to analyze it, analyze it, analyze it, you're going to get more and more reasons why. And as you get more reasons why, you're going to create more stories. And if you get enough stories, and we're going to get into this too, you get enough stories, you're going to end up ultimately creating a program around why you're broken. A whole program running in your subconscious that defines how broken you, your family, your life, your, your situation is, and that it's unchangeable. Because you validated it so much through analyzation. And maybe you use analyzation to manage it, but you'll never truly let it go. Or you can learn to just feel the emotions attached to the thoughts that make up the stories in the programs and start letting them go.
one at a time. If, it, if you only get, think about this for a minute. This is called the 1% rule again. We're coming back to it. If you only get 1% change at a time, then that's all you really need, isn't it? 1% change and that's all you really need. Because if you get 1% change compounded daily, your life will radically shift in a very short period of time. So I'm not looking for big changes. I'm not looking for huge changes. I'm looking for um, consistent 1% little shifts. When you understand that, that the 1% rule is all you really need to make changes. This, is, this was the biggest piece was the 1% rule for me. When I got the 1% rule down and I only looked for little tiny changes or shifts, and I want to I reiterate this over and over and over again, my life began to change radically. The 1% rule led through compounding interest to huge shifts in my life. Up until then, I was always looking for the big thing. I was looking for this thing to understand, this thing that was going to shift my life, this thing that was going to, um, that was going to, everything was going to blow up around, right? And, uh, and what I stopped looking for that, I stopped looking for the quantum leap, uh, then my life, whole life began to change. So as long as I got, I didn't care if it was one one hundredth of a percent, I didn't care if it was one one thousandth of a percent, I just cared that there was a change. Does this make sense to everybody? Hopefully it does. So I'm going to give you an example of this. We want to play with an initial release now. So the first part is, is what is a release and what does a 1% release feel like? And what does it feel like to let go of a little bit at a time? Okay, so the first thing is a, is a release is very simple. If I was to take something like a ball and I'm holding it and I'm holding on really tight, that's, that's your subconscious mind holding on to an idea. So all of you pick something really simple. Look around the room and pick something that you might be that might bother you. It could be minor. It could be the whiteboard thing. So this is perfect because the whiteboard thing is annoying me a little bit. So I'm going to use that. Um, so if we take the 1% rule, uh, I'll welcome the sense of annoyance into my body. And it's the same thing as my subconscious mind is holding on to an idea that this whiteboard is bad or not working or not going to work well. And there's a sense of a grip internally on it, okay? And so I want to welcome that grip. I want to welcome that feeling in my body. Now, notice that I'm going to grip in time with how, how much I'm feeling the frustration. If it's really frustrating, I'll grip really hard. If it's light, I'll grip really lightly. And then I'm going to ask my mind to, and I want to get my ego out of it. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to analyze it. Just want to ask my mind, can I let this go? And then what will happen is that is there's a sense that if I just observe and allow the process to happen in my body, something will happen. Now, can I let it go some more? Can I let it go some more? And what I'm feeling is my hand is just naturally getting lighter on its own. And can I let it go some more? Can I just relax? Can I relax some more? So I don't even have to use the word let it go. Can I just set the intention to let it go? That's actually even easier than using words. And I feel my hand relax more. And then pretty soon, I start to feel lighter and lighter and lighter about it. The way I use revealing is I might say, can I reveal the love, which is ultimately what we're working on, isn't it, behind all of this? Can I reveal the sense of love? And that, made, that got me the biggest release so far. As soon as I said that, can I reveal the love that's behind this frustration? The reveal the love that's behind this anger or this doubt or this worry. My whole body just relax. And I could feel, we were talking about feeling earlier. I could feel the feeling through my whole body just relax. And now I want to drop the ball. I want to point out that a release is, the not, is not doing something. It's doing less. So if I'm holding on to this ball really tight and I release it, I'm relaxing. I'm doing less, not more. Where everybody goes wrong with releasing, and this is going to be huge, everybody take note of this right now, throughout the weekend is what's going to happen is, is when you start to do more through releasing, uh, what you're doing is I'm going to do a release. You think the release, let go. And it tightens more, let go. You're trying to do something to release. The release is doing less. Can I let this go? And then feel 
as you let it go, the peace or the joy or the lighter energy, even if like say you're down in apathy and you go to anger, that's lighter. So the lighter energy on the other side. And can I let a little bit more go and a little bit more go? Can I just reveal more lightness? Can I reveal more peace? Can I reveal more love? And it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And what you're literally doing is just asking the body to do it and then observing. Now, this is the next key that's really important. You're letting it happen and then you're observing. And then you're basically getting out of the way. You're letting it happen and then you're just observing. You observe and watch and then you take note of what your body does. Does it relax? Does it loosen somewhere? Does some part of your body open up? And this is the real key to this whole process, okay? 